Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku. And tonight, we're bringing you a space weather news update. Wednesday, December 15th, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. We're bringing you over here to solarham.net to show you the X-ray flux here. And the X-ray flux has peaked over the last 24 hours up in C range. It's currently at, the X-ray flux is at B 5.3. That would be a continuous B flare going on right now. But it was above the C range. And we, in fact, got to C8 here and approached M flare stature just about 24 hours ago. Now, the M flare threat is still at 25%. C flare at 85% and X-Flare at 5%. And tonight we want to discuss a few things to bring you up to speed on how to watch the sun and watch the changes that may change the rest of your life. And the first thing you want to be looking at is the telemetry. And when we go all over all these graphs, the X-ray flux, the solar wind graph, the GOES magnetometer, and even the ISWA, solar wind speed predictor, we're talking about telemetry. And telemetry is a big word that a lot of people don't understand, but it's simple to understand. Telemetry refers to automatic measurement and transmission of data at a distance, either by radio, cellular, or other means like satellite. It's used in the medical, corp uh, medical world here for things like pacemakers and other devices in the hospital, beaming information to computers. It's also used for weather forecasting, and especially when it comes to space weather. Now, the first thing we look at is the GOES X-ray flux. The X-ray flux shows us the amount of plasma that is coming into Earth at any given moment. It doesn't matter if the plasma is shooting off the back of the sun, the side of the sun, or the front of the sun because of a coronal mass ejection. Some of that energy comes to us, and when it comes to us, we measure it, as the X-ray flux here on the planet. And this is the chart we show to show the intensity of what's happening with the sun at the surface here. So actually we're looking at it from the space in between the sun and the earth, this particular telemetry. So we have satellites pointed at the sun and this is the energy coming from the sun instantaneously that is shooting at earth. So when this M flare, this C8 happened, this amount of intensity was the intensity pointed at Earth, not anywhere else. And that's why we get this intensity. And that gives us an idea of what may be coming in the future. Because if this was a coronal mass ejection, it would take a few days to get here. And that's why we use the solar wind predictor here, or the solar spiral, or the Enlil spiral, or the ISWA Signet Streamer, which is what we're looking at. So NASA has one and NOAA has one. This is NASA's Signet Streamer that we're looking at. And it's showing that, well, just the other day, if you were to pause this, right when that came out, you would see that it just, that was happening, boom, right there the other day. But if you come over to the chart, it's probably this event here, or one of these events, headed towards, well, where is it headed towards? Earth is this yellow dot. And you can come see Earth is yellow. The red triangle that's hitting Earth, or the red diamond, is Sol O. That's a solar probe. And the square here is Stereo A, blue Stereo B. Those are the ones that are making these measurements. And the green dot here is Venus. We're about to be in alignment. Earth and Venus and the sun are going to line up in just about 24 hours, hours of powers. And it is our prediction that this will trigger a major earthquake on Earth in the next 24 hours. So these are just some of the techniques we use to predict earthquakes, uh, the effects of volcanic priming of magma chambers, and space weather here at Earth. It's all about the telemetry. And so what we're looking at here on the telemetry is there has been a peak here in the X-ray flux. In order to get this uptick in X-ray flux, we need to have, well, 
sunspots and activity on the surface. So I just clicked on the HMI magnetogram and you can certainly see here a string of sunspots. All of these numbered regions are called active regions. The newest active region was just numbered moments ago, active region 2909. And the one before that was 2908. And the one prior to that was 2907. 2906 and 2905. So you can develop the morphology and the hierarchy and the dating of these based on the numbers. 05 was first, followed by 6, 7, 8, 9. And they, that's how they emerged. Boom, 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 boom. Now, earlier today, I was watching a podcast from one of the top solar watchers. You know who I'm talking about. And he referred to this as an unprecedented event with huge sunspots. In my opinion, this is gobbledygook, fear-mongering, and there is nothing spectacular about this string of inconsequential sunspots. And I will prove that to you in just a moment. This is the current map of the HMI continuum as of now, just moments ago. We just refreshed it. And the largest spot is actually this one right here, which actually, in my opinion, there's only one, two, three sunspots we're looking at that I can really determine. The rest are plages developing into spots. But some people nitpick. But the fact that someone who's been watching the sun for a uh, over a decade claims that this is a significant event well it just goes beyond me and and i'm about to show you why here is the latest picture that we're just going to blow down for you for scale back in october 22nd 2014 we had a sunspot called ar12192 which was bigger than jupiter laterally about the same size vertically and paled in comparison to the size of the Earth. Now, I have the HMI continuum for October 22nd, 2014 pulled up here for you. And we'll just compare this, these four spots that are on here to the current HMI continuum. This is the current continuum. This is the 2014. Now, just to be fair, let me make this slightly larger. Right there. I'm actually cheating because this is a little larger than the one we're about to look at. But you can clearly see what a large sunspot looks like. It doesn't look like anything you're looking at here on this HMI continuum whatsoever. <coughs> Active region 12192 is a large sunspot. These are not large sunspots. Active region 12193 12187 and 12194 are all bigger than anything that's on the, the disk currently. So all the sunspots back in October 2014 were bigger than any of the sunspots today that the suspicious one was complaining was the most unprecedented thing he has ever seen. But I digress. Because back in March 29th of 2001, there was an even more epic display of sunspots as compared to today, 2003 in March, or 2001 in March, and today. There is zero comparison. Now, you'll notice that all the sunspots are up in the north here because every 11 years they switch position, and over 22 years we have a full sunspot progression or a full hail cycle. Now, let's talk about the biggest X solar flare ever classified because a lot of you are waiting for that x flare to take out the grid as well as i but an m flare could do it it just has to be the right direction the right size it, it's not about numbers and letters because back in 2003 the biggest x class flare ever classified an x28 occurred on tuesday the 4th of November, 2003, this flare saturated the X-ray detectors on several monitoring satellites, and the associated coronal mass ejection came out of the sun's surface at about 2,300 kilometers per second, or 8.2 million kilometers per hour. Many people died of heart attacks, and we'll get to that. Strokes. and went crazy and robbed the bank. 
But the grid stood up to an X28. Why? <clears throat> well, because only part of the CME was directed towards Earth. Almost none of it. And it was only a glancing blow. Wouldn't you know? Had this happened just a few days later, well, it would have been devastating. Now, this is what the sun looked like during that X flare back in 2003. And you could see that the sunspots on the sun are gigantic compared to any of the spots currently occupying the disk today. There's, there's no comparison. So, any sunspots that could eliminate the grid or change your life forever or kill Uncle Charlie are going to be this size. Not these little sand grains. In fact, there's no evidence that sunspots of this size can cause any significant damage to Earth whatsoever. It's the bigger ones, like this spot in 2014. Or these spots in 2001. Or the biggest X flare ever classified here on these spots. And that was in 2003. So we don't have anything like that on the sun to worry about, regardless of what the people with half a million viewers say, based on facts and science. And we have time to look at it. And apparently others don't. Now let's talk about some of the other science and the things we need to worry about. Geomagnetic disturbances and cardiovascular mortality risk. These short-term geomagnetic disturbances driven by solar activity have been linked to a broad range of adverse health effects. And in this blog, they will bring you up to speed on what you need to know if you're in that high-risk category. We also have a paper in January 2005 on geomagnetic storms and their influence on the human brain functional state. So if you suffer from cog cognitive diminution or other mental health issues, this could be one that you may want to read. And there are other references which you can investigate on your own. <clears throat> and then back in 2019, in October, Biomedical Journal of Science and Technological Research, Technical Research published The Impacts of Space Weather on Human Health, which is a general paper and here we just get the abstract and the references onto what you may need to know about what the effects, including higher rates of leukemia and cancer, higher blood pressure, acute myocardial infarction, more cases of an anterior wall myocardial infarction, more strokes and cerebrocardiovascular insufficiency, severe migraine attacks, more depression, suicide, cardiovascular fluctuations related to the level of geomagnetic activity. And we have put this all together on this graphic that comes from the very person fear-mongering about these spots. You do the math. Now, there are two forms of geomagnetic alerts. Geomagnetic storm alerts, which bring the KP above 6 here, 6 to 9, and the cosmic ray alerts, which are zero only. Now, we know that you become psychic and have near-death experiences when cosmic rays are at zero. They also charge the muons in the subsurface, causing silicious rich magma volcanoes to erupt or heat up. But geomagnetic storms cause human health alerts, 7, 8, 9, especially. We're talking heart rate fluctuations, heart attacks, strokes, acute coronary syndrome, blood pressure increase, seizures, migraine risk, anxiety, stress, emotional instability, cognitive diminution. It's like the full moon effect on steroids, suicide risk, mental disorder, flare-ups, radiation risk, do not fly. So, hope you got something out of the video. We discussed a little bit about telemetry what we're looking at, why we're looking at it, what it all means. We have a small flare headed towards us, nothing to worry about. It's a glancing blow, just like the 2003 X-28. It did not fry the grid. So this 
C8 is not going to do anything. And that's a boom. To knowledge and science. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where no one will walk you through it like I just did. I hope you got something out of the video. Share this with your homeschoolers. Share this with people looking to understand why the sun controls weather on earth and why it controls our future as the future on earth hangs in the balance. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Smash that like button. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge and the power of the sun.